Hello, hello. All right. So we just got off of our group coaching call where we welcome all of the people, no matter what program you're going through, no matter what kind of coaching relationship you are in with me, we invite everybody to this call. And these calls start with 15 minutes of a lesson that ties back to the self-control operating system. And then we go into coaching and it's an engaging call. There's a lot of um, interaction, I guess I would say, because we ask very um, strategic questions at the front end and ask people to you know, put their thoughts, their feelings into the chat. So I have kind of fodder to coach from. So that's what the hour long call looks like every single Wednesday, but it is a group coaching call. So we have people um, that represent lots of different demographics. And so I just want you to know, those of you who are listening, that this is for everyone, for whether you're looking for, you know, like better performance in your personal life, better performance in your professional life. Um, if you're really like just striving for a heightened sense of happiness, I would encourage you to check this out. So, um, Today, we had the opportunity to get the lesson from one of our student teachers. Kate Menson is currently in our student teacher program, and I'm just going to hand it off to her and let her explain what, why she even decided to take what she had already learned and join the student teacher program, which is commitment um, for sure. But I'm curious to know, Kate, why did you decide to join the student teacher program? Well. I'll be real initially because you offered it. <laughs> um, I've learned in my many years to continue to affiliate pe with people who are making a difference in my life. So I'll start there. Thank you. Um, the second reason would be, you know, in the two plus years that I have been working with you in a variety of capacities, I have learned a lot. And I've not been confident in my ability to share what I'm learning with others. Mm -hmm. And there's times where what I've learned has become a part of the fabric of who I am. So I'm just expounding and sharing. But when I think about it, I overthink it and I worry that it might not be perfect. It might not be exactly how I learned it. And I stop myself. And the lessons I've learned have been so powerful. I think that's a shame that I'm stopping myself. Others are not getting the benefit, you know, indirectly um, of what I've learned. Um, but I'm also stopping myself for myself. Like, like clearly, this is something that I could choose to change. The, the confidence and the ability and the desire and the, um, what's the word? The impetus to actually start teaching it um, in my own life, in my professional life, however I would choose. So, um, and then I guess lastly, and this is implied, just to grow. Um, I'm always looking for uh, things that speak to me. Um, I trust my gut a lot, a little bit of data, mostly gut on what my next path is going to be. Mm -hmm. And now we just came full circle because um, I've just grown so much since really, truly being affiliated with you. So thanks, Kate. I, um, it's such a privilege to be able to come alongside people and watch the unnecessary suffering mm -hmm. start to extinguish um to really be a support mechanism for some of the big big goals that people have and be a support mechanism for some of the problems that people want to solve so um and i would say those are the two big doors that people come through it's either a problem that they have really struggled with and challenged by or it's goals that they want to achieve um and that can look like a lot of different things, you know, the problem might be the unnecessary suffering and they can't even pinpoint where that's even coming from. Right. Um, they wouldn't call it unnecessary. They would call it, this is the way I operate. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, we start there. And so I think the next question is, what did you share? What was the lesson today that our students learned and why was it important? Well, the lesson was on empathy and empathy as a power in your life. Um, you can be empathetic toward yourself, 
toward others and toward, I'd say a circumstance, but you said something else today. Um, uh, yeah, I guess a circumstance, an event, an event. Yeah. And, um, you know, what, what we really learned big picture was if you're empathetic um, and you use that power in your life, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of what others do or don't do, um, and especially if you are empathetic toward yourself, which basically means self-love, um, everything, this is so basic, but everything works out. <laughs> it kind of is the key. Um, and so one of the things that I learned through the student teacher program is that a lot of people really, truly struggle with empathy with self. It's a lot easier to be empathetic toward others and even to learn over time as we age and get wiser and realize that events happen and, and we're empathetic to why that may have caused X, Y, and Z in the world. Um, you know, toward yourself, that's a, that's, that was a big blind spot for me. And, and through learning about this, I really did recognize some, um, some pretty deep stuff in terms of um, just that that's really been lacking for me in yeah. for most of my life. Yeah. 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 So I would challenge anybody who's listening to this, whether you are a current or a former, or you happen to just like <laughs> meander across this video, whether um, you consider you're a student, yourself a student and a lifelong learner, I'm going to just challenge you right now to tap into what it is that you're feeling and, um, and then ask yourself why you're feeling that way. I shared that I used to feel a lot of self-loathing and I lived, I operated from this thought that you're doing it wrong. And it didn't matter what the circumstance was. That was the underlying thought that I was operating from that created self-loathing. And when I would hear, all you got to do is love yourself. <laughs> I'd like, excuse that. <laughs> and say, like, whoa, that's so woo woo because exactly. I love myself. I think about myself all the time. Here's the truth, you guys. If you think about yourself all of the time, if you have this kind of obsession about yourself, you're probably self-loathing. The people who are self-loathing, they never stop thinking about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, they're not thinking about themselves in a way that's creating any sort of wanted feeling. Like, no matter what the circumstance was, the weight on the scale, the dollar amount in the bank account, I was always tying that back to how broken I was, to mm -hmm. how wrong I was doing it. I was so obsessed with myself. So that's another key to recognizing when you're operating from fear from your primitive brain and that you're not operating with any amount of self-love because the person who loves themselves it's so fascinating how little they actually think about themselves because mm -hmm. they've got that. They got that. They feel so confident in why they love themselves. They don't ever think about that. They don't come into play. So that's a great way to just kind of check your work to catch where you are allowing like the, the story to unfold. Everybody thinks it's the actions. And I promise you, it's the feeling. And so that's what we teach here. We welcome anyone who has a problem to solve or a goal that they want to achieve, or they just want to learn more about what it looks like to actually live moment by moment with a certain amount of happiness. So anything else you want to say, Kate? I just wanted to add, um, coming with a problem to solve and a goal to reach, um, in the yin and the yang of working on both sometimes at the same time, it's amazing how intertwined those are and how I believe that if you are working to solve a problem, it might not even seem like a big deal, something like empathy toward yourself, how perhaps those big goals could come a lot easier. Right. Oh, yeah. So I had a little light bulb moment at the very beginning of this uh, stream yard. So thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Thanks, you guys, for being here. We'll see you next week.